I've heard you make speeches. It seemed to me that you were advocating uh, what I would have to describe, I think, as violence to meet the serious injuries that have been done your people, with which I totally agree. I don't call that violence. Uh, I don't in any way encourage black people to go out and initiate acts of aggression indiscriminately against whites. But I do believe that the black man in the United States and any human being anywhere is well within his right to do whatever is necessary, by any means necessary, to protect his life and property, especially in a, in a country where the federal government itself has proven that it is either uh, in, unable or unwilling to protect the lives and property of those human beings. Just before Pierre takes it, you've got a pretty good fighter and the world's heavyweight champion lined up with you to help out. Yes, Pierre. Well, Mr. X, if I guess I call you that. Is that a proper uh, appellation, yes. Mr. X? I I'm wondering if you still believe as I think you certainly did at the time you were allied to the black Muslim movement in a segregated black nation no. in North America. I don't believe in any form of segregation or any form of racism. Uh, I'm against any form of segregation and against racism. Is it, uh, am I right in saying that the black Muslim movement, which you have left, did believe in that? Well, Elijah Muhammad taught his followers that the only solution was a separate state yeah. for black people. And as long as I thought he genuinely believed that himself, uh, I believed in him and believed in his solution. But when I began to doubt that he himself believed that that was feasible, and I saw no kind of action designed to bring it into existence or bring it about, then uh, I turned in a different direction. Yo, welcome back to the NYA show. I know that was a little different, a little flippy flip on how we do the NYA show, but it's been 59 years since Malcolm X uh, was assassinated. And I wanted to start the show off just a little bit different, just to pay homage to some some things that he may have said during his time when he was alive. It was in 1965, one month before he was assassinated. They don't teach anything good about Malcolm in school. It's all bad, bad, bad. Luckily, when I was in school, they didn't mention Malcolm at all. The autobiography was right there in my face for years, but I never picked it up to actually read it until I became a man into my 20s. And my kids now, it made me sad, disappointed that when I mentioned Malcolm X, it's, he's bad. So we had to go through a... You know, let's go through this real quick because obviously there's somebody in the system that's promoting this good, bad. You know, with our with our people, it's always either this person was good, this person was bad. There's no in between. All these, you know, things. The way that they pick, Martin was good, Malcolm was bad. You know what I'm saying? Like that's exactly how things go in school. So I did want to start that off that way. You know, uh, bless it to his entire family because he does have a beautiful daughters that are alive, keeping the legacy going. So and be sure to read the autobiography of Malcolm X as told to, as told to Alex Haley. Is a life changing book. Now, how a mother is balancing how a mother is balancing life in the pursuit of dreams. An interview with actually Brianna M. Thomas by AJ Tan be available on Spotify as well as literally is no pressure. Episode one fifty four that's available on YouTube as well. You guys, the links will always be below. Let's hop right into rest. Sending RIP to this man coming straight out of uh, Atlanta. Uh, family identifies worker construction worker killed in I seventy five crash hours before a GSP trooper kill at the same crash site. This was done, put out on the 21st. I do want to put some respect on his name. 68-year-old Nathaniel McCreary. Hope I'm saying that right. Nathaniel McCreary, may you rest in peace. May your family be brought peace in this time of uh, mourning. And may, may I send my condolences. This happened in uh, Clayton County. The original accident happened Monday night on Interstate 75 in Clayton County. GSP said that a black uh, Kia traveling in a construction zone hit 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 the worker. The worker identified as Nathaniel McCrary died of his injuries on the scene a few hours later around 12.30 a.m. on Tuesday. Just a few hours later as we went into a new day, Georgia State Patrol Trooper Chase Rettner was ki hit and killed during the investigation of the same crash. So rest in peace, condolences to his family as well. That's another Georgia State Trooper that has been lost in the beginning of the 2024 year. So rest in peace to him as well. Channel 2's Brian Mims talked to McCrary's daughter Wednesday, who said he was beloved father of four grown children, called her father Poppy. He did everything he could for me, McCrary said. He did everything he could for me. He made sure I... I had everything I needed, and that's what we're supposed to do as parents. Investigators are still searching for the two drivers involved in the crashes. So if you were, 
I ain't even gonna put that next sentence out there. People, let let your conscience eat you alive. You know things of that nature. Probably was on your phone looking at a post, a similar post on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and not paying attention to the road when these things occur, or just not caring, just speeding. I'd be out on the roads all the time. I hate that I have to get out there and hustle on that road. You know when I have to because you just never know when that moment will come or when you're just on that road and something just goes wrong and now. Your life is gone forever because somebody else wasn't paying attention. Now, this is the state trooper. I do want to play this video. Uh, yeah, I want to hear. Okay, that's the end of it. Let me play this video because the video talked about what actually happened. It was the report from the day. Let's get it going. As long as I don't have an ad, that's going to come. But I do want to. Get I'm calling about my accident claim. And to figure out how someone hit and killed a state trooper and a construction worker. Georgia State Patrol says Trooper Chase Redner was investigating a deadly crash when a driver hit him early this morning. It happened along I-75 in Clayton County, and Channel 2's Michael Seiden is there live. Michael. And Linda, we want to give you a live look right now at this stretch of I-75 North. This afternoon, authorities are calling this an ongoing investigation. In fact, it's still unclear if the driver who struck the state trooper will face any charges. For the second time in less than a month, the Georgia State Patrol is mourning the loss of one of its own troopers killed in the line of duty. Investigators say Trooper First Class Chase Redner was investigating a deadly crash along I-75 North near Mount Zion Boulevard in Clayton County when a driver struck and killed him overnight Tuesday. Right now, no one is facing any charges, and the cause of the crash remains under investigation. But the trooper's sudden death has rocked the first responder community. It's just heartbreaking because we work with those guys on a daily basis. Steve Richardson of Wrecker One Inc. didn't know Trooper Redner or the construction worker who was killed in the same area Monday evening. But he says these types of crashes have become all too common. Just my humble opinion, I think everybody's tied up in this electronics. In fact, earlier in the day on Monday, Steve and his crew were responding to a broken down tour bus about 10 miles from where the fatal crashes happened when he says a distracted driver plowed into their truck. Steve took these photos of the damage. The guy was just paying attention to his phone by his own admission and uh, struck the back of our vehicle and totaled it out and flipped and he actually broke his neck. Steve says he's grateful that he and his crew were not injured, but his heart breaks for Trooper Redner. I'm an older fella, so I, I know what it's like to have, you know, get married and have kids. This, this guy will never experience that, you know. Yeah, all day today, I've been working with investigators trying to learn the identity of that construction worker who was killed in the initial crash. So far, they haven't identified that person, but as soon as we learn that information, we'll pass it along. We're live in Clayton County, Michael Seiden, Channel 2 Action News. So sad, just awful. Michael, thank you. Governor Brian Kemp shared his condolences for Trooper Redner in a statement that says, in part, quote, Marty, the girls and I are devastated by the news of Trooper Chase Redner's sudden and tragic passing. Our hearts are broken for his mother and fiance, for his friends and community, and for the entire Department of Public Safety family. Tonight let me see. Let me get that. Let me get my sound back. Yeah, that, that's um, yeah, that's completely terrible, you guys. And obviously, that video was earlier before they could actually identify. You know, he said in the video that they didn't know who the, the construction worker was, but that was before they were able to identify. So I want to send condolences. Look at that, sixty-eight years, uh, sixty-eight years old, in good shape. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. This man probably had sixty-eight. Is not like I said. That's not old, you guys. Like people are living longer. Life is supposed to be lived for as long as you can on this earth, but things happen. So I want to send condolences again to him, his his family. If he had a wife, all of his children, as well as the state trooper, he had a fiance. Imagine what you know how she's feeling right now, you know, dealing with things like that. Nobody wants to see people die in the line of duty, and definitely we don't see people dying on the job. That's not what anybody signed up for. You want to go to work. Most people want to get up in the morning, go to work, get back home. Go to work, get up in the morning, you know, you know, get up in the morning, go to work. Come back home. That's really what the plan is. It's not to lose your life in these crazy Atlanta streets. If you're not from down here, you don't drive on these roads. It gets crazy out here on these roads all the time. You know, people texting that said a dude broke his neck and another accident because he was on the phone. You know, what I'm saying on his phone doing all that. You know, so once again, rest in peace. I-75 claims these two lives over. The, you know, it this week. Sad to bring this type of you know news to everybody, but. Let me know what y'all thought. So I honestly think that we need to stop focusing on making the road so small and focus on extending a little space to put for if you're a construction worker or somebody, there should be uh, railings. There should be railings in between and then gaps every, you know, every so far down gaps, gaps. 
gap. So if you need to be on that side, at least a month, uh, uh, tear a damn car up. But you get to me after you done broke through them bars, then maybe it was just my time. But them bars should be slowing you down and cracking your, you know, cracking the muffins as, uh, as Ish would say on, 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 Joe, on the JVP, cracking the muffins. You know what I'm saying? When you coming on through there, you think you're going to get over those those rods that they put there to kind of prevent some of these things from happening. But I don't work in, uh, in you know, in, you know, in uh, construction, you know, uh, infrastructure, but just something to consider. Let me know what you guys think could be done for situations like this. People getting killed, getting out the car changing you know changing your tire you know people officers getting killed when they stopping cars today let me get your license right say boom you know things like that are still happening to people so you guys let me know what y'all thoughts on this story i appreciate you guys per usual once again rest in peace to uh the great the um, honorable uh miss uh you know minister malcolm x and uh el uh, uh, el shabazz El, you know, I, I I hate to mess up his official name after he passed. No, I don't have to mess it up. I got it right here. They still have it listed right here as far as um, once he passed, because everybody got a Shabazz after he passed um, added on to their name. So I would, let me see, I would, I could keep you off for a couple more moments just so I could see if they have updated. And damn, Malcolm was born in Nebraska. You know what I'm saying? Let me see, let me see if they have his uh, Malik L. Shabazz, rest in peace. It's the NYA Show. Appreciate y'all as always, and I'll be with you again next time.